What is up everybody? This is Mike with Tiny Life Big Mission and this week in the Word we are studying 1 Samuel 127 to see why the version of Bible that you use matters. Grab your Word of Truth and let's jump in. Welcome to This Week in the Word, where this segment of the channel focuses on a weekly Bible study where we share truth based on what the Word of God says. If you have questions about God or you are seeking truth, we welcome you. I want to thank you all for joining today, and I hope that this video is a good resource for your personal study. This is one video of many in a series called Does Version of Bible Matter? This week's study, we will be covering 1 Samuel 127, so grab your Bible, regardless of the version, and open it to our main text to read along. It's important that you see this with your own eyes. Now, just as a reminder, this video, along with others like it, have been grouped into a playlist that is called Does Version of Bible Matter, which can be found on our channel's main page under the Playlist tab. If you are new to this channel or are interested in understanding more about our position, please check out our quick reference video on our five guiding principles. I will link that video on the top of the screen here. Today, most Christians would say that the version of Bible that you use doesn't matter, but this is a topic that all believers should study out for themselves. It is arguably the most important decision that one will make as a believer. The words recorded by God's divine inspiration are the words that He chose to give us. They are His words, and those words matter. There are over 900 versions of English Bible that all have individual copyrights. And by copyright laws, those individual copyrights are required to use different words from each one of the, the copyrights. And because things that are different are not the same, those different words change the words that God gave us. In this series, we look at the words that are changed in the different versions of Bible to see how those changes affect what the Word of God says. So hopefully you already have your Bible open to our main text, which is 1 Samuel 1.27. And let's start out our study by reading what the King James Bible has to say. In 1 Samuel 1.27, it says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. For those who may not have noticed, I highlighted the change on this screen. What is highlighted is the colon at the end of the verse. So the change that we are looking at in today's study is the punctuation. All modern versions of Bible change this verse to end with a period instead of a colon. Let me show you a brief sampling of what I'm talking about. Now, it may be hard to see, but in all the versions, verse 27 ends in a period, which I highlighted as well. There are only three versions represented here, but the vast majority of all the modern translations make this change. Now, I didn't verify all 900 versions, but of all the versions that I checked for this study, I only found one that kept the colon. You can see here that the New King James ends in a period, the ESV ends in a period, and the LSB ends in a period. Punctuation matters. The Bible commands us to not add to or to take away from God's Word. Punctuation helps the reader understand written language. Every comma, period, colon, question mark, and the whole thing, all of it, is all part of God's divinely inspired Word. Changing any punctuation in God's Word can change the meaning of what is being said. It's no different than changing the words. Let me give you an example. This basic sentence, let's eat, Grandma, lets the reader know that the writer was excited to share a meal with their grandmother. But when you remove the comma, this basic sentence takes on a whole new meaning, telling the reader that there is a group of people who are excited to eat their grandmother. Now, just because technology has allowed the modern world to become lazy with punctuation, grammar, spelling, and the like, doesn't change the fact that punctuation matters. Jesus had this much to say in Matthew 5.18, which reads, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. This shows us that it's not just the words of the law that matter. In written language, punctuation matters every bit as much as the words used, because punctuation conveys the tone and the meaning of the writer. Both are part of God's pure and preserved word. Therefore, all the new versions that remove the colon and replace it with a period change the meaning of what is being said. In the context, this is 
a story about this woman, Hannah, who her husband and her cannot conceive a child. So she makes this agreement with God, asking him to give her a child. And if he does give her a child, she has told and promised God that she is going to give the child to God for his whole life. In the King James Bible, this colon shows us that, that God gave her this child because she made a deal with God to give God the child if God would allow her to conceive. Making verse 28 read as if Hannah was then keeping the part of the deal that she made with God. In the modern versions that close the verse 27 with a period, they change what is being said to Hannah asking the Lord for a child, and so God just gave her one. It doesn't imply the deal was struck. And when you read on in the context of verse 28, it reads as if Hannah was some kind of extra good servant of the Lord because she gave the child to the Lord. This change in punctuation changes the meaning of what's being said. Now, I know that there are scoffers out there who will say that that's not that big of a change and it doesn't impact the overall teachings of the Bible. Yet, at the same time, they would be willing to defend their favorite comic hero, movie series, politician, or whatever, when the smallest detail is changed in their storyline, or when what they have been quoted to say is misrepresented on some kind of social media page or something like that. These are all temporal things, and how much more important is the Word of God? And they scoff at me in my defense for things that carry an eternal weight. Everyone knows that punctuation matters. Therefore, to change punctuation is making a change to God's divinely inspired word. We as Christians should carry a super high level of reverence and respect and defense to any potential change that any scholar would make to the word of God because it's the Word of God that we claim to be the foundation of our faith. And that's going to conclude this week's study. But before you go, if you're wanting to know how you can support the work that we do here, there are five easy ways. First is you can share our studies with those who you know who need the Word of God. You can also feel free to share them on all your social media platforms. Second is to like this video if you found the content helpful. Third is to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. These three actions help support the algorithms inside of YouTube to help the Word to go out. Fourth is through giving. Over the years, I've had a number of believers reach out and ask uh, how they can help us with financial support, because truth is we need it. But there's no pressure, and it doesn't matter the amount. Only give if you feel led by God to give, and you can do it with a cheerful heart. You can send your gifts of support through Venmo or Zelle. For Venmo, use the QR code on the screen or search by email, which is how you will find me on Zelle as well. But most importantly, the biggest way that you can support this ministry is through prayer. James 5.16 says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. People need truth and your prayers can help, so please pray for this mission. If you have questions or would like to share your story, the best way to communicate with me is through email, which is tinylifebigmission at gmail.com. I simply ask you to remember our five guiding principles before reaching out. And that's all the time we have for this week. I hope to see you next week in the Word. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.